Hello, dear students. So here we are discussing or getting a complete review of the audit paper that has happened today, the CA final audit May 24 examination. Yes, I do understand that this paper we cannot say was an easy one or a manageable one. It was one of those papers which is considered to be a tough or maybe an above average paper. But then you should always remember that whenever I have explained any topic to you, or whenever I've given any sort of explanation, or when I began any new discussion with you, I always told you that the approach for this paper has to be more practical oriented than considering it to be a theory one. And today this point is actually proved because we have seen that the entire paper has been taken on practical aspect. Basically, if the student has only by hearted concepts or maybe a by hearted the content given and not try to understand it conceptually, then this paper is very difficult to crack. However, if suppose you have been through with the concept thoroughly, if you have understood the concepts properly, interpretation has done very well by you, then in that case, this paper is going to be an average paper for you. You will be able to write it. More importantly, it is very clearly proved by the Institute that a selective preparation is not going to be helpful. So basically here the understanding has been very clear that you cover 100% of the syllabus, only then the paper can be cracked. So if you have done a selective preparation, then in that case, it is going to be a big game changer for you. And also understand some areas, okay, these are those areas where they have picked up the questions where we have not expected much, but yes, questions have come and questions have been tricky. But understand those who have prepared in depth everything have understood concepts properly. I think even those areas, the tricky areas which have been picked up, even those could be handled very easily. Not very easily, yes. With a little bit of difficulty is obviously going to be there because questions are very complicatedly drafted. But yes, they could manage it. The weightage given by ICAI, basically the way they were, we were expecting that the weightage would be distributed and all. Nothing has been followed. So where we say more importance is going to be like 50% of them will be coming from the standards, remaining will from all the other chapters and all. Nothing of that sort has been followed. The complete paper has been a different game, uh, ball game altogether. So here, it's nothing that these many marks are going to come from standards. All the new standards, these many marks are going to be questioned. From each topic, so many marks are going to be tested. Professional ethics is going to be so much. All of that doesn't hold any, any longer good. So Institute has proved that yes, you have to prepare for 100% coverage. Only then you'll be able to crack the papers. With a conceptual clarity, considering this to be a practical oriented paper, if your preparation has been in that level, then you'll be able to manage the paper well. Okay. Yes, it is above average, as I told you. For some, it is going to be tough. Okay. However, selective preparation, if you have done, then you have had a real bad time because I would not say a bad time, but yes, it would be very difficult in cracking because areas like internal audit, areas like SA 810, uh, sorry, um, uh, SA yeah, 810, those places, questions have been somewhere where they have gone deep into the questions. They have gone deep, deep into the chapters. Digital audit, investigation, all these areas have been focused on. When I explained to you the, uh, the SAE 3402 and 402 as a standard, I told you very well that this is one of those areas which could be tested this time. And as we have discussed that, yes, it has been tested and they have given a lot of things considering it. NOCLAR, we were expecting and the question has appeared. ESG, obviously it was expected and I told you principles when you're studying, you have to be thorough with the core elements. So those who have read only the name of the principle have only tried to understand the name of the principle and not got inside it. The BRSR reporting, if you have not gone into detailing, then in that case, answering that also would be difficult. But if you have gone through the classes properly, you must have seen that the core elements, I have taken them in detail and I told you very clearly that one of the core elements definitely has a chance of getting tested and that has been tested. Correct? SQC, SA220 has become institute's favorite because there are so many questions coming from that quality control aspect. Otherwise, overall, the coverage has been really good. It is a tough paper to be solved. But yes, if a conceptual learning, if you have done, I think you would be able to manage it. All right. So with this, let us get started with the discussion. MCQs, obviously, we don't have any reference or we don't know how about it, how it is. But yes, I tried to get a connect with some of the students who have written and they've said MCQs were a little tricky. The objective questions were a little tricky where the question were more focused on picking up the most appropriate answers. And that is the reason I tell you, if the conceptual clarity is not there, and if you read a particular sentence, you will believe that everything is correct. But they are told to pick up the most appropriate answer. And to pick up the most appropriate answers, you have to understand conceptually very strong. Okay? So yes, there also they have shown 
that practical understanding, logical, uh, you know, understanding the concepts that has become more emphasized on. So because of that, uh, till the review that I have got from the students who have written the paper, they have told MCQs have been a little tricky. And descriptive is what we are going to discuss. Okay. So let us take up quickly. So first the question was regarding uh, the acceptance and continuation of client relationship which was not very difficult here the focus was regarding uh, the factors to be considered for acceptance and continuation of client relationship and also there has been a problem in the previous period and all so because of that integrity as an element was focused more on so you had to give reference to sqc1 and the answer was quite very clearly uh, there the matters to be considered for acceptance and continuation of client relationship all the pointers had to be covered but focus was more on integrity aspect because the scenario was explained in the case of fraud and everything correct then after that, if you look at the next question, okay, this question was basically you had to form an opinion in the given case and you also have to give a reference to the uh, note, okay? So if you can look at it, it was a foreign sub uh, subsidy company will be providing the information. Just one second. So it was regarding a going concern element being discussed here and how the books were carried out and all. So basically looking at the entire scenario where going concern has been questioned and basically they're telling you that what has to be included in the part of audit, where if accounting has been done correctly, then in that case, how the reporting will be. So we had to introduce the EOM paragraph, give the understanding about the consequences there and draw the attention there. So it was basically opinion paragraph and reference to the EOM paragraph in the auditor's report. Okay. So this you have to read the question very carefully and then you would be able to draft a suitable audit opinion paragraph and also give how you give the disclosure to the note, which has been properly been, uh, you know, uh, appropriately disclosed in the financial statement. If you want to give a reference in your audit report, then obviously you would bring it where in the EOM paragraph. So that was been uh, questioned here. Okay, then there was a question regarding applied criteria. If you have gone through the videos very carefully, I have told you that these are the questions that could be tested in the case of SA810. And when I did the SA810, I very clearly focused that out of the 800 series, the most likely of the questioning aspect would come where from the 810. And that has been proved here because there have been questioned about applied criteria. And what is it? Guide him the factors. Factors is to understand the nature, the purpose. It should not be misleading. Okay, who are the people who are going to get the information? The people who are supposed to get the information. Okay, so basically that was the requirement to be written here. This would be manageable if you have done SA810 properly. Okay, then. Uh, this was the question that is 2A, which was a little bit tricky one. Okay, this obviously should have a very good knowledge regarding SA402 and SAE3402. Okay, it's because it has been uh, told about service organization. So if you have done a proper understanding about the two, then I think you'll be able to manage because they're telling you what aspects are to be considered by CAZ in using assurance report as an audit evidence that controls at CT contractors are operating effectively. So this question is basically discussing about the type two report where we talk about design, operating effectiveness, everything. And also they have told how will the auditor use it for the purpose of testing control. If you have done SA402 and SAE3402 correctly, this is very much included as a part of content of the topic only. So you'll be able to crack it properly if you have done the standards correctly. This also had focused and I told you in examination, highest possibility in the SAE series to get a question on uh, this 3402. Okay, then. After that, it was regarding the confidentiality. The professional ethics was focused on this part, confidentiality requirement where we discuss very clearly about when the auditor can, you know, share the information where it is required by the client or required by the uh, regulatory body that you have to give the information. However, here you have to take care that you have given to the proper recipient, proper information has been given. Okay, it should not be detrimental to, uh, to anybody's interest. Okay, so basically all those matters where uh, when is the auditor allowed to give the information or when is required to give the information to third party and it will not be considered to be a breach of confidentiality. So this was something when you discuss fundamental principles, if you have gone to the lectures, you'll see that in the fundamental principles itself, we have taken this as a detailed discussion where I've told you about confidentiality, how important it is. And when there is a possibility that the auditor can give the information to a third party, even then it is not going to be a breach of confidentiality. So there we say when the permission is from the client or required by law or regulation, even then he has to take proper care. Okay, like when investigation happens, inquiry happens, that time also you're required to give a quality review conducted but it should not be detrimental to anybody's interest. No third party's interest have to be affected. Okay. And it has to be given to proper recipient. Proper documents have to be given. So basically all of these points together, you have to collaborate and the answer has to be given. 
So that was regarding principle of confidentiality. It was quite manageable. Then here, okay, this was an important one. Okay, and I would uh, definitely say that if you have done a selective preparation, you would not be able to get this because if you have even by chance left internal audit topic, okay, or you have done it only, you know, uh, very a little reading of it you have done, then you'll not be able to crack this because in internal audit, the last aspect that we discuss is about audit trail. And in audit trail, okay, in the institute study material, there is a very uh, a clear question given on test your understanding or the kind of case study has been given. Exactly that has been picked up and bought here. And if you look at the language, same thing is the language used. Functional, operated and was not disabled. When we discuss the concept of audit trail, we understand that now it is required to have such kind of accounting software, which is able to generate an audit trail. Audit trail means what? All the editing, all the changes, the timestamp, okay, whether it tampering has happened, everything has to be recorded. So in that case, how are you going to check the controls? For that, the answer is readily available in the study material. If you have gone to internal audit, in the study material, this question has been then. And as it is, it has been picked up by the institute. So basically, if you have gone through it in detail, you'll be able to capture it. Okay? Then. After this, here the question is regarding investigation. Okay, so the next question picked up is on the topic of investigation. A straight question again. This is regarding investigating of the profitability of the business for judging the accuracy of the schedule for repayment of repayment ref, uh, furnished by the core limited. So here you're judging, investigating on the profitability and here the criteria is considered only in the form of assets. So basically the four assets criteria that is fixed assets, uh, tangible assets, we talk about uh, inventory. Okay, those are the elements that have been picked up. If you read investigation properly, it's a direct question there. Okay, so here also there is no much discussion to be taken up. This is not a very complicated one. Uh, when you investigate on the profitability uh, area, keeping into mind the assets consideration, then there are four assets to be taken into account and about that the investigation has to be done. So those steps only are supposed to write here. Okay, then. Then you have the next one. There has been a restatement of financial statements for the last three years. And you have asked for management representation letter, but they are giving you only for one year and they're refusing for the other two years. This you have to understand SA 580. If you have uh, done a detailed study of SA 580, you realize that in SA 580, we study a concept for the period okay, covered of written representation. Then we understand that the period covered and the content covered of the written representation should be relevant to the subject under audit, a subject under which we are doing the review. So obviously here, if the management is not giving, it is something not acceptable. So that will be the point of your discussion. So this is regarding the period of written representation. What should be the period covered by the written representation? So it should be covering all the three and here the management is refusing. So what will be the auditor's course of action? So this is directly from SA 580. If you have done a detailed reading of it, then you'll be able to get this. I think you'll be able to manage this. SA 580 discussion it is. Okay, then uh, this, when we have done the NOCLA discussion, I've given a very clear understanding regarding the type of fee that you can collect. Okay, uh, no, it's not about the type of fee. One second. It is part-time if you can serve. The clause 11, this is. Okay. Yes, when you're serving as, if you're a part-time chartered accountant, you can serve as a secretary here. Okay, this is allowed. Uh, this is the clause 11 requirement. Yes, you can give an opinion based on that. So this is manageable. Here you have to remember it's a clause 11. This also will not be difficult. That's straightforward. And if you look at this, you know, not on salary come full-time basis. So basically they're talking about a part-time CA. If you have done a reading of this, a part-time CA in practice. Okay. Okay, the next is regarding Okay, uh, they have given you, he's been practiced for more than five years. The firm undertakes actually audits for listed entities of various sectors. He has assigned as engagement quality control reviewer. So it is EQCR and about the uh, engagement partner. So they're asking you what are the aspects which will be looked into by the CA guru for this thing. Okay, Fact, factors to be looked into is regarding all the significant aspects, the planning, everything. Okay, those points are very simple from uh, SC220 and SQC1 you can pick up. But more importantly, they have also question on the second aspect that is resolving the references. And we know that, you know, these partners have to resolve the references based on the account, based on the quality control policies of the firm. Okay, so basically here again, SQC1 and SA220, if you have done a good reading, regarding EQCR and engagement quality control part, engagement partner and the quality control reviewer. Okay, then in that case, you'll be able to answer both. So which factors they're going to take into account for discussion purpose and what would happen if there is a difference of opinion between them. Okay.
Okay, then is regarding should detail and guide the team members of the engagement team and differ. Give your views with applicable SQC one. So MNC Limited has engaged CL Lalit to help company in compilation. So compilation of financial information, they're asking you. Obviously, your is SQC one is uh, relevant. The answer is yes. However, year, because it is not an assurance engagement, so independence as such will not be required. Otherwise, SQC1 whole will be applicable to compilation engagements also. Okay, so that's not a problem. This we can answer easily. Then I told you, this thing only I was focusing on, I told you that when we discussed the BRSI reporting, I had told you very clearly that out of the principles, this part will be focused on. What was the part I had mentioned? Core elements. So if you have done only the principal reading, if you have read the name alone and you have not gone to the detailing of it, then in that case, this answer would not be answerable by you. You would not be able to get it. So the principal is telling uh, NG, RBC have given the guidelines. So that means all the nine principles. So this principle was regarding business decisions in organization should be open to disclosure and accessible to the relevant interested party. So society measures that we have to take. All right. So based, based on that, core elements you have to discuss. So they're not asking you the uh, name of the principal or they're not asking you which principal it is, but they're asking you the core elements. That is the content that has to be reported on. Okay, so that is important one. If you have done the BRSR nine principles properly and core elements you have studied properly, this would be manageable. This I would say a tricky one because uh, it's first of all, a complete a new chapter. And where if you have done the reading of nine principles, then only you can target this. Otherwise it is not possible. Okay, this question could not be correct. Then fifth A, Okay. Now in fifth age, again, they have a review of interim financial information. It is a SARI 2410. Okay. What is the question being asked here? Given the situation, please advise CA Rina what kind of review report has to be submitted. So review report and all the matters regarding material uncertainty and all is to be discussed. Okay. So this year, again, we are going to apply the same logic that we have. Give the opinion and include this matter in EYM paragraph. Okay, if you have done SRE 2410 and if you have the basic understanding of standards, this you can easily under, uh, write it, but you have to give reference to the correct SRE, SRE 2410. Okay, it's regarding opinion to be drafted and more importantly, about material uncertainty regarding going concern, which paragraph you're going to disclose is that also has to be given. In case it is clean remote, so it is EOM paragraph. Okay, then. Okay, this question is completely based on FR. So if you have done the uh, financial reporting aspects correctly, then you'll be able to manage this while preparing CFS. Okay, how are they to do line by line basis adding together like items and all that. So basically, how are you going to consolidate is the question. So if it is completely FR based. Okay, okay, this thing, again, no clear. Okay. If you have done NOCLAR correctly, you would have seen that in, in NOCLAR, we have done a discussion regarding NOCLAR versus SA 250. Consideration of laws and regulation and the uh, NOCLAR provisions, we have done a detailed discussion and we have studied the differences between the two very elaborately, where we understood regarding the stakeholders, the kind of breaches highlighted by each of these provisions by the standards. Exactly that has been given here. You had to simply differentiate SA 250 and NOCLAR. If you have done NOCLAR, I think this would be cracked and very easy to answer. Okay, Dep depending on the type of statement that you are focusing on, which frauds are highlighting, eminent breach is a concept declared where, where is the discussion of stakeholders happening? If you are able to pick up those pointers, the discussion is quite simple. Okay, then. Uh, after that comes Karu, and I had already told you that without Karu, the paper is not going to be there. Okay, so obviously, if you have not done Karu, your, your, uh, your syllabus coverage only is incomplete. So Karu question not being there is not possible. So here in Karu, they have not asked you one clauses, but the clauses picked up are two. One, you can see it is about undisclosed cash sales. The income tax department has caught you and there has been undisclosed income, income escaping assessment. And one more is regarding uh, resignation of the auditor. Okay. On further matters due to non-recording of transaction, is there in reporting responsibility? Okay, the two things have been questioned. Here, if you can see, it is the CARO requirement of clause 8. Okay. one second yes so they're taking in the place during the audit you found you are appointed a statutory auditor 
Okay, and your uh, 50 lakhs owing, yes, accepted by the company, applicable tax. The company had not recorded some undisclosed income. On further inquiring matter, you came to know that CAT had resigned. Oh, so resignation also is there. So clause 8 plus clause, if you can recollect properly, clause 18 is about resignation. So your two clauses we are picking up. One is 8 and one is 18. Okay, of the para 3. Yeah. Uh, because look at this, resignation also is there and uh, unrecorded income is there. So both of these clauses you should be able to pick up correctly and give the answer. Okay, so basically Karu, obviously question, it, there cannot be a possibility. This time I had seen that many people were telling Karu questions might not be coming because of all the new in inputs and all. But obviously how can it not be there? Audit report, one of the major elements is Karu reporting. So how can there not be a Karu reporting done in the examination? So here you can see not one but two clauses have been picked up. One resignation and one regarding the uh, undisclosed income. Then this was a direct digital audit question. And in digital audit, if you have studied detail, you'll see that the first part of the discussion itself talks about understanding about the IT environment. Okay, infrastructure, architecture, uh, method, uh, the uh, the softwares, everything. That had to be picked up. A very easy question. I would say straightforward question. So all this, what they're dealing is all the extra item the institute always gives you to you know think in deep what they're asking you. But if you look at the last line, what is it? Explain key areas for the auditor to understand IT environment. Okay, so key areas, obviously, it is a straightforward question. It is understanding the IT environment. Okay, this was an important one because this was an amendment part. Okay, where depends upon if you are doing the audit and your for non audit fees, how much you can charge. We have discussed this as a part of NOCLA discussion that we have done. And we have understood which cannot be more than the audit fees and all that. So if you have done that particular discussion properly of how much fees you can collect, if you're doing statutory audit also, and you're providing non-audit service also, then what will be the threshold on the non-audit services? How much fee can you collect? So that was purely based on that. If you have done that part correctly, you will be able to handle this. Not a problem. And last was NBFC. Okay. Uh, suggest a step, uh, procedure for audit manager to be followed in the case of categorization of this NBFC. Again, a straightforward question. Nothing much to be discussed here. If you have done NBFC category-wise discussion, then steps to be written here are very simple. A straightforward direct question. Correct? So if you can look at this, the areas that have been covered throughout the entire paper, okay, is basically uh, all these areas like they have taken professional ethics as we have expected, the clauses have been tested. So if you have done only the clauses discussion, if you have done only the first schedule, second schedule and the clauses under it, this paper is going to be difficult to be cracked. And that is the only reason I tell when you look at professional ethics and you see the number of hours are so much, how are we going to cover so much? This is an idealistic under understanding for you that yes, if you do that in-depth understanding in the preparation only, then you'll be able to crack questions like this. Otherwise, it is very simple that we can also do two, three hour session and we can say, okay, done. But why we have so many hours included as a part of professional ethics? Because that kind of in-depth understanding itself will be able to help you to crack this paper correctly. Okay. Then standards, we tell the it is the important for you to cover all the areas. And that is the even standards also when we discuss, we discuss detailed. Okay. Karu, we have spent so much time in discussing why you can understand the kind of question being asked. Two different clauses have been tested. Apart from that, you can see questions coming from investigations, questions coming from NBFCs. ESG, as I had mentioned very clearly, nine principles, it, it was supposed to come like that. This time, I do agree they're focused more on SQC1, SA220. So those who have done the SA, SQC1, SA220 in detail and must be have revised also very well, it's a, you know, a very big thing for them because many questions have come from that area. So it's going to be one of the lucky things for you. And those who could not, I think that would be the unlucky factor here. However, uh, this is uh, not an easy paper to be handled. I would not say it is easy, absolutely. Yes, it is not even average. It is above average. But Institute has put one thing very clearly in all our minds. That yes, now only mugging up the things, only doing the ratification and all, that will not be acceptable. You have to focus on concepts. So however long or however lengthy the hours look like, doesn't matter. You have to put in that effort and understand the concept very clearly. If you are able to pick up the concepts correctly and do the interpretation and you have the confidence that yes, given a situation, I'll be able to analyze it correctly. Only then you're prepared to write a paper like audit. So now I have told you, now you have to consider it be a, a practical oriented paper. All right. So with this, we'll stop the discussion here. And yes, once we, uh, you know, get some more understanding about the kind of MCQs and all are there, then we'll be able to discuss it much better. But yes, till the information that I have got, MCQs have been a little tricky. Okay, so we cannot see easy. FR, AFM, if you compare, I would say audit was a difficult one. Okay, so all the best for the upcoming papers. Okay, take good care and study really hard.